Good morning, good morning, good morning, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I am rejoicing and I am already glad in it. I hope you are excited as well about the word of the Lord on this morning. Good morning, Angel. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Sabria, Jose, all the saints of God who are up early. Good morning to my sister, Bridget, Viv. Uh, let me see who else I got on here this morning. Uh Dr. Watkins, Tracy, Brenda Robertson, Fierce, good morning, good morning, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I am rejoicing and I am so, 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 so glad in it. This is a new day and I'm excited about the mercies and the grace of God on this morning. I am so excited, y'all, let me tell you, you know, y'all know I always have something hot off the press. So last night, good morning, Kiara, listen, last night, as many of you know, I'm in the bed by eight. I don't care if it's summer. I don't care if I ain't got to go to work. I am in the bed at eight o'clock. So I was, I dozed off to sleep and I had already looked at what the Lord would have me to share on this morning. Good morning, Deacon Allison. I had already looked at what the Lord would have me to share on this morning. So I was good with that. I did my um, nightly devotion before I went to bed. I was good. And as soon as I dozed off, the Lord woke me up and he said, walk on water. Good morning, Nicole. He said, walk on water. And I was like, what? So first I turned over. Y'all know how I, my normal routine. I turned over. Good morning, Sharia. Good morning, Nicole. Milton Harrison. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Renee Bryce. It's so good to see you all. So the Lord was like, walk on water. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I turned over thinking with, okay, walk on water. Yeah. He said it again. He said, I said, walk on water. And I was like, okay. So by this time I sat up. And I said, well, let me get my Bible out and start reading. Y'all, this like just took me. It, it took me. I, ain't, I don't know what time I end up going to bed. I didn't finish my notes. So I had to get up super early this morning to literally finish finish um, my notes for this live because he changed everything I was going to say. This is how special you are to God. <laughs> it blew my mind. He said, no, you got to tell them it's time to walk on water. He said, don't even be distracted. Listen, y'all, can y'all just go ahead and drop this in the chat? Because I'm, I'm about to go. I, I can already feel it. I can already feel that anointing weighing on my head. He said, tell them, do not be afraid to walk on water because they see a storm. Woo, y'all. He said, do not be afraid in this season. Listen, listen. He said, in this season, do not be afraid to do what I told you. Oh, God. Roz, he said, this, he said, in this season, this last six months of the year. Okay. I'm trying to calm myself down. He said, these last six months of the year, you got to do everything that I'm telling you. It's important for your 2025. Good morning, Isha. She's my the evangelist of the group. Listen, he said, you got to be, he said, you're going to have to do everything that I am telling you to do. He said, in this, in this last six months, he said, this is not the time to get slack. This is not the time to be, did I hear God? Is it God? Is it my flesh? He said, walk on water. Oh, y'all, listen. Listen, Sabri, he said, just do it, just do it, just do it. He said, because you got to understand that storms may be around you on your left, oh God, on your left and your right. But he said, you're going to have to learn. <laughs> he said, what you, I, we did this yesterday. He said, what you did, watch this, the first six months of the year prepared you for what you about. To. Everybody was sending me lives because um, another prophet, I forgot his name because I don't really follow him. And they were like, Dr. Three, he's saying the same thing to you about the same thing you said this morning. Listen, if, 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 if they are, if they are, watch this, true prophets of God, we all are in the same vein right now. <sighs> to get the body ready, because something, I'm telling you, because something is about to hit in 2025, and it is not going to be good. Y'all think, see, because our mind is saying, oh, it's going to be because the president, oh, it's going to be because COVID on the rise again, oh, it's going to be, mm -mm, mm -mm, it's bigger than that. I'm telling y'all, and it's not going to be good. It is not. I told you, listen, the prophet that they sent me yesterday, he was, he was given the prophetic word again of what I gave y'all in, 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 um, on watch night service, December 31st. He was giving us, he was confirming the exact same word, confusion and deception, but it's next year. Oh, it's on and popping. But guess what? Guess what? Y'all we good. We good. We good. But this is the thing. This is the thing that God keeps telling me. He says, daughter, and I, I'm, I'm going to give y'all this. I'm going to give you. I told my team and I think I told y'all yesterday. I know I just came out just hollering. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. God bless you. But listen, um, Saturday, 
I told my team about this prophetic dream that I had. And this is why I keep telling y'all, this is not the time, watch this, to play with the tithe. This is not the time to play with the seed. I'm gonna tell you why. Because in this dream that I had, I was doing something and I could hear the voice of God screaming, they have robbed me. And I was like, huh? And he was, it was like at the top. Yeah, that's it. Jackie Talbot just dropped it in the, in the um, chat. That's the prophet that was sharing the exact same word that I gave that morning. He was sharing it that afternoon. But listen, God was screaming. They have robbed me. And so I was still thinking about that on yesterday. I was like, God, so I know that has to do with the tithe. But then God starts saying, but in 2025, financially, they going to need me. Watch this, y'all. And I'm listen, I ain't trying. I am not a prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T. That's that's not my grade. That, that, I, I don't roll like that. Because I ain't going to, listen, if I'm going to go to hell, it's going to be because of what I did, not because of what I said to the people trying, trying to get them. Watch this. God was screaming, they have robbed me. So all day yesterday when I was walking, I was thinking about it. I was like, robbed you? I mean, what? He said, because daughter, he said, because in 2025, this thing that's coming, financially, they going to need me. He said, but I'm going to remind them, watch this, that I'm going to remind them. That you robbed me. This is not the time. I'm going to say this and I'm going to get right into the word. This is not the time to play with the tithe. This is not the time to not sow. Watch, I'm going to tell you why. Because if God, and, and I'm like this, my team know how I am when it comes to the seed. I always pray about my seed. That's why I tell y'all the same thing. I always pray about my seed. Tithing in my household is not optional. If you're going to live here, you're going to tithe. You know why? Because ain't going to be no curses walking around here. If you're going to live in my house, you're going to have to tithe. Watch it, because the tithe rebukes the devourer. Who is the devourer? Satan, he come to eat up everything you got. Watch this. So you, you got to be careful that you don't not. He said, you have robbed me because you don't tithe. Watch this. And I know about the seed because the seed calls the harvest. So I am the type of person, tithing is non-negotiable. It comes out first before we pay any bills, before we do anything. The tithe come out first. Then we get to the seed. Watch this. Then we get to the seed because people always say, well, Dr. Reed, you're so blessed by nature. You don't have to. Because watch this. I, I, I'm a seed sower and I'm a tither. It's not it's not negotiable. But when it comes to the seed, watch it. When it comes to the seed, I know that's going to create my harvest. And my harvest, watch this, keeps returning and returning and returning and returning and returning and returning. And my harvest never comes the way I put it in the ground. It always come back as more. Watch this. So whenever God says so, I don't. Why? I don't, should I sow it? I don't know. Uh -uh. I, I, I'm sowing regardless. If, if you even ask for a seed, I'm sowing. Why? Because that, listen, because tithe, watch this. Because tithe and seed, Dr. Watkins, is not about, it is not about God. It's more about us and him getting something to us. In 2025, he's saying, he said, what you do these next six months is going gonna, is, is gonna to determine what I do in 2025. So if you want to, if you want to hold your tithe, watch this. Because well, I got bills and I ain't there yet. Now, baby, you better get there real fast. God bless you. That that was my um, one thing for this morning. I'm about to get into this word. So I, we are talking about this week. <laughs> we are talking about this week. Listen, listen. Can, can y'all just drop in the chat? I got I got to get my my, my um I got to get my finances right when it comes to God. I got to get my finances right when it comes to God. I cannot be caught in 2025. And God said, but you robbed me. So now you asking for my help. I am not your genie in the bottle. Whew. Listen, I am not your genie in the bottle. So I got to get the tithes right. That's why I tell people, I said, you don't go to church. You better find somewhere to sow into some good ground. This is not the season to not tithe and then get over here in 2025. God, can you help? Because it's something coming financially. Whew. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into this word. I'm going to get into this word. I'm going to get into this word because God was telling us, he said, better is the end of a thing. Whew. I feel like I just went like a hundred miles per hour. Listen, listen, better is the end of the thing of a thing. The first six months, January through June prepared us for the, this six months that we're in now. It's preparing us for this season now. God bless you for your seed. So I guess that, that really hit some people. God bless you for your seed. Listen, listen. So, so we have to understand, listen, listen, that, that, what we went through, the hell we went through, the torment, the storm, all this stuff, that, that it prepared us for where we are now and where we're going when it gets to 2025. Watch this. Good morning to my cousin, Mary, and so good to see you. Listen, and, and so we have to understand that we must be prepared. 
Listen, it's all about preparation. God has, has prepared us, listen, for what's happening now. You think you went through some stuff the first six and said that was just to get you ready for what I'm about to usher you into. He says, and, and, I, and I don't, you know, I know I said something bad is coming in 2025. It's going to really be bad because it, it's worse than the presidency, y'all. I'm just telling you. But 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 it's going to hit the financial system, the money system, the money, the money, the money, the money, the money. Listen, so, and, okay, I'm going to tell you this. And so you need to make sure that you got cash. Y'all know the last time I said this, this is when the ATMs crashed. Okay, because I told you I'm not a prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T. That's not me. I'm trying to help the people of God that that's what I'm called to do. So, so you got to understand you need to have cash on hand when 2025 hit. I already had told God already warned us before. So have your cash on hand, have some cash in the house. Um, Cause it, the ATMs, the ATMs, the banks, the banks, the banks, that's all I'm gonna say. So what God is telling us, he's preparing us for what is about to come. We are prepared people. Understand it. Drop that in the chat. I am a prepared people. My daddy is preparing me. He said, I will do no thing unless I first reveal it unto the prophet. That's me. I'm trying to help you. And so he says, everything you went through, it was preparing you for this season that you're in now. Now today, he said, I need them to walk on water. Trust me. Trust me. Tr Remember yesterday was in the boat. We talked about this yesterday. We were in, what was we in yesterday? Yesterday, we were in Mark. We were in Mark. And, and today we're in, oh uh, God, today we're in Matthew, but the same story is in Mark. So yesterday he was talking about, watch this angel. Yesterday we learned that, that Jesus walk, was um, in the boat with them sleep. They got scared. Even though Jesus was right there with them, they were scared. Even though Jesus had prophesied to them that we go into the other side, they were scared. And Jesus said, what woke me up was not the storm. It was your lack of faith. Whew. Now here we are again, same disciples on a boat. <laughs> God, I love you. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, same, same disciples. Hit it on the boat again. And they think, watch this. Is that a ghost? Is that a ghost out there? Watch this. Y'all, this is going to bless y'all. Remember, the storm that they got in yesterday was because they were obedient to what God told them. Watch this. They in the boat again. Listen, y'all, this is going to bless y'all. They in the boat again. A couple of days later, guess what? Jesus told him to get in the boat again. So they back in the boat because of, watch this, obedience. Yesterday, we learned that the storm came from Satan. Watch this. this. This storm came from Satan, but they are in a storm caused by Satan because they did what God told them. I'm trying to help y'all. Do you understand? Listen, listen. Do you understand that you can be going through hell? Because you did what God told you. Who? Really, Dr. Three? Yeah. You could be going through torment. You could be going through all this chaos because I was I did what God told me. But watch this. We learned that, 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 that what God was doing, he needed to teach them something while they were yet in the storm. Here we go again today. Jesus said, <laughs> God, I need y'all. I'm done preaching over here, but I got to go pray. Because... Jesus again, here he go in his humanity. He is tired. He has dealt with the people, but his heart is saying, I got to talk to my daddy. Who? Because he longed to be, so, listen, he longed to be in the presence of his father. So he tells his disciples, I have ministered to the people, but now I got to go talk to my daddy. And I don't want y'all to come with me. I want y'all to get in the boat and go ahead of me to the other side. Again, do y'all hear this this morning? So it says, here we go, Matthew 14. Oh, Lord, this is good to me. And I tell you, this is hot off the press. Dr. Watkins, I got it. I was doing all this this morning, typing, trying to get my little notes together. Listen, listen. So here we go. Matthew 14, chapter 22nd, verse through the 33rd. God, I love you this morning. This is going to bless y'all. This is going to bless y'all. Listen. So it says, immediately Jesus made. Mm, watch this. Immediately Jesus made. So understand. They're being obedient. <laughs> Watch this. They're being obedient. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. While he got, while he dismissed the crowd. Verse 23. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, listen to this. He was alone. Jesus was alone. Verse 24. And the boat was already consider a considerable distance from the land. 
It was being buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. They in a storm again. Do y'all hear this? Good morning, Candace. Do y'all hear this? The storm that they in again. Jesus I, Jesus, I just got out of a storm with you. Okay, Jesus, you just proved that you are the son of God. Remember they said at the end, what manner of man is this? That he speak to the waves and the sea and they obey him. Oh my God. So I'm not scared to be, watch this. So I'm not scared to be obedient this time and go get in this boat. But after I listen to you again, you got me back in the storm again. Y'all, I'm about to lose it this morning. I just got over one. Who is this for this morning? I just got over one hurl, Jesus. Now, here we go again. You got. Who oh God, you got me back in the storm again. I deal with one problem here coming up. Who is this for this morning? You dealt with one problem. You got that situated. Now here comes something else. The car broke down. I got the car fixed. Now here go the, the, here, here go the, 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 the electricity in my house acting crazy. Who is this for this morning? I just dealt with one problem and God got me out of this. Now he put me back in another God. What in the, could it be? Watch this. You ain't learned your lesson the first time. Uh oh. Uh oh. You ain't learned your lesson the first time. Watch this, Kiara. Because me as a teacher, oh God, I love you. I love you. I never give my students a test that they master. Once you master a test, we're not taking that test again. But if you don't pass this test, you're going to be at what we call the small group getting reteach. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It says, oh God. As a teacher, oh, Tiara, watch this. This is going to bless you. As a teacher, oh God, I love you. Oh, God, this is so good to me. As a teacher, I teach a lesson. I have normally 26 kids. Watch this, Loretta. I have 26 students. Those that master the test, that means they pass the test. They mastered it. It's, it's a such thing in education that we call above grade level, on grade level, approaching grade level, and beneath grade level. Guess what? If you approaching and you beneath, you about to be at my, at my table. Getting what we taught. Watch this. Watch this. Brenda Robin, Robinson Fields. She, she works in education. She knew this. Listen, watch this. So that means you about to spend a whole nother week or two at my back table being retaught the same thing again. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to retake this test. So apparently, God, I love you. Apparently, the disciples didn't learn. It's something they missed on the first go round on the boat. So Jesus, I got to put you back out there again. Hmm. Watch this. I got to put you back out there again. Candace in education, she know. Watch this. Jesus, I got to put y'all back out here on this boat again. Because y'all didn't get it the first time. But you're going to learn today. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. So he puts them back out there on the boat. I ain't even finished my scripture because y'all pulling and I'm trying to go here. So verse 25 says... <laughs> Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them. They're on the boat. The storm is coming again. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. Here we go. They getting scared again. Didn't I just deal with y'all fear? Didn't y'all just learn that if you are obedient to what I said, even though the storm come, I'm with you. Even when you listen, even when you think I'm asleep, remember the first time he's sleep, he's sleep. Okay. Even though I'm asleep, I'm still there. Watch this. So he's going to show them again. I'm going to put you out here on this boat. A storm going to come. I'm going to see what y'all going to do. It says, watch this. Verse 25. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. Whew, watch this. What? Listen to what they say. They were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. And here we go. And they cried out in fear. Here we go. They cried out in fear. Watch this. Jesus, verse 27, Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It's me. <laughs> Listen, it is I. Don't be afraid. Can y'all just drop that in the chat? Don't be afraid. Take courage. Don't be afraid. Watch this. T Dr. Watkins is in the back. Yesterday, they were scared. Today, they scared. What is God doing? What is Jesus doing? He said, I'm dealing with y'all fear. And he's showing them, yesterday, you can sense me in it. And even though I'm not answering you, I'm still there. Watch this. And this time, he's showing them, even when you can't sense me, I'm still there. Remember, he wasn't in the boat with them this time. He told them to go ahead. Go ahead of me. Go, go ahead. I'm going to pray. 
So two lessons already. Yesterday, I'm in it with you. I'm in it with you. You can see me, but I ain't saying nothing because I'm apparently I'm asleep. Watch this. Watch this, Tabitha. He says yesterday he was asleep. He ain't say nothing. So they tell Jesus, you gonna let us die out here in this storm. Jesus looked at them like, what? I'm right here. And I already prophesied and told you we're going over to the other side. Watch this. Today, he just told them that this text today, what is he telling them? Go over to the other side. So why do you think, watch this, watch this. So why do you think you're going to die in it? If I already told you the end, I begin with the end in mind. Whew, watch this. So, so he's telling them, go on over to the other side. They get out there in the boat. Here come a storm again. Then they look, oh, that's Jesus. Wait a minute. Is, this a, is it a ghost? How, what, watch this. We do the same thing. God, is that word from you? No, Satan going to tell you how to become a millionaire. No, Satan going to tell you how, how, how to win souls. No, Satan going to tell you how to, let, let, people, we got to think. Satan is not going to tell us to do something that's going to that's gonna build the kingdom of God. They say, is that a ghost? Jesus say, it's me. <laughs> it's me. Take courage. Whew. It's me. Take courage. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Verse 28. Watch this. Verse 28. Lord, if it's you, here we go. Peter, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you and walk on this water. How I know it's God. He going to tell me to do the impossible. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I can't do it. That don't sound like God. It ain't never been done before. That's how you know it's God. He's sick of, okay, y'all. What he telling you to do, watch this, watch this, Candace, this is going to bless you. What he telling you to do, it has never been done before. That's how I know it's God. What he telling me to do, I don't have enough money. What he telling me to do, I don't have the resources. What he telling me to do, watch this, I don't have, I, I don't even have all the information in my brain to do it. I just know it's out there. I just know it's crazy. Good morning, Janera. I, I just know it's weird. I ain't never seen it done. That's how I know it's God. Peter said, <laughs> if it's you. Tell me to walk on this water too then. Jesus said, come on in. Come on. Because I'm going to cause you to do what has not been done before. And you're going to have to trust me in it, angel. You're going to have to trust me in this thing. He says, and, and, and what I'm going to show you is that in order to walk on water, in order to do, uh-oh, in order to do, oh, Jesus, watch this. Y'all got to get your emotions out the way. Mm. Because my emotions say, girl, don't do that. You ain't got the money. You gonna invest in that? You know that's all you got. I mean, is you crazy? God saying it's time to walk on water. It's time to trust me when you can't even trace me. It says, I'm going back here. Verse 29. <laughs> Jesus says to Peter, come on. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. Who God help me today. He came toward Jesus. Verse 30. But when he saw the wind, here we go, took his eyes off Jesus. And start paying attention to the wind and the waves. And I remember the last storm. Watch this. He took his eyes. Oh, God, I love you. Of Jesus, verse 30. And he saw the wind. And he became afraid and started to sink. Distractions. Distractions. I'm going to say it again. Distractions. I'm going to say it again. Distractions. You are running. I told my team, that we were talking about this at our meeting. I say, you were running well. Who persuaded you? Ooh, you trusted me. You, you, you trusted God. You were trusting him. Who persuaded you? What distraction caused you to look to the left and to the right and take your eyes off of what God told you? When we, when, we, when we were talking about that scripture this weekend, it goes on to say it wasn't the one that called you. It wasn't Jesus. What persuaded you to go left? Ah, oh God. And to go right. Watch this. Because Peter was walking on the water. <clears throat> oh, God, I love you this morning. Peter was walking on the water, looking straight at Jesus. And he had this thing. And he would, Jesus said, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And he would come and come and come. And guess what? The wave started going and he took his eyes off Jesus for one minute and sunk. Who is this for this morning? What God is calling you to do? And, and see, because this is what God got me. He said, you can't look at, he said, put your eyes back on me. Stop looking at the people. Stop, stop focusing on what they're not doing. Stop focusing on the, you, that you know they're talking. Because I told I told my team, I said, when I was on that cruise, I said, oh, God was letting me have all kinds of conversations. I was on, I was all in my little feelings. Because anytime I get out, uh oh, anytime I get out on water or I get in nature, God starts speaking. If you ever want to, listen, prophets will always tell you, it's something about nature. 
It's something about nature and the sound of music that that calls us to just go there. And so, so I was out on on in that big ship. I'm on the ship too. So I was out in on that big ship, out in out in the ocean, and I was looking out at the water. And all of a sudden, I start hearing them talking. And I said, "But they, I thought they were with me, God." He said, "This is for information." He said, "You need to know what they're saying." He said, "You need to know who who who, who grinning in your face and talking about you." Who is this for this morning? Because God, would, you would come to a season in your life. God will start letting you hear the conversation and then say, now shut your mouth. I'm giving you information so you know, how, I don't know who this is for. I'm giving you information so you know how to move. I'm giving you information so you know how to handle them. So watch this. So Peter walking on the water. Jesus saying, come on, Peter, come on, Peter, come on, Peter. And Peter like, yep, gotcha. That, that's God. That's God. That is him. He's the son of God. He, and, and he focused. God said this. God said that. God healed this. God did this miracle. And then he'll come away and he went. See, distraction in his song. Watch this. Watch this. It says, verse 30. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And he began to sink. Fear will cause you to sink. Hmm. Fear will cause you to sink. Y'all listen to this. And he cried out, Lord, save me. This is, who would serve? Oh, God. Oh, God. Who God? Who wouldn't serve a God like this? I was looking at you. I was doing what you said, but I got distracted, God. And I looked to my left and I started sinking, God. But even though I was sinking, even though I took my eyes off you, when I cried out to you, you came. <laughs> when I cried out to you, even though I took my eyes off you, you still rescued me. Who God help me, Holy Ghost, this morning. It says, verse 30, Phew, he was afraid and he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Verse 31, it says immediately. God didn't, Jesus didn't wait a while. He didn't say, I'm gonna let you get all the way to the bottom and think you're drowning. And then I'm gonna save you. That it, we, we, that's what we do. <laughs> we do, y'all know we do it. Y'all know we do people like that. Jesus said, I'm not gonna let you drown. It said he just started sinking. It didn't say he sunk to the bottom and he died. And, and here come Jesus. That ain't how I, I told y'all we got a good, good father. It says immediately, Jesus, watch this, verse 31. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. And guess what? Guess what he called him? He does not, oh God, this is going to bless y'all. Watch this, Sabria. Watch this, Ross. He does not call him Peter. He gave him a new name. Y'all better, when you read about it, that's why I'm telling you, this thing tore me up this morning. It says, verse 31. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. He don't say Peter. Guess what he called him? Little faith. <laughs> oh, God. He didn't even say Peter. Listen, he did not say, Peter, why did you doubt me? That's not what the Bible say. Watch this. He said, immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith. <laughs> why did you doubt me? Who? Do you know how harsh that would be? Jesus basically called him little faith. After all I done done, after all the miracles, after, and you know it's me, so you coming, you know it's me. And you still don't have no faith. What in the world? You see that it is me, Jesus, and I'm telling you to come on. Here we go again. He calls him little faith. Come on, come on, little faith. That was not a compliment, y'all. That was not a compliment. He says, come on, little faith. Then he asked him, why did you doubt me? Watch this. Jesus didn't ask him why you doubt me while he was sinking. But this is what we, you, watch this. Ross, this is going to bless you. Watch this. Somebody need to tag Wendy. I don't know where she at. But watch this. This is going to bless you. God, God does not, oh God, he does not wait till we start. Why, why are we sinking? Why are we going under? He don't say, I, but I want to know why why you did what you did. I want to know why why you sinking. This is how people do. Y'all y'all been there. I've been there. I'm going through something and I need your help. And while I'm going through and, and I got the creditors calling and I need you to help me, you asking me a thousand questions. I just need to know, are you going to help me? I don't need a dissertation. I don't need a lecture. I need you to, to help me because I'm sinking. What did Jesus do? He called, he got, he rescued him first. Then he asked him, why did you even doubt me in the first place? Ooh, Jesus. But what do we do? We're going to let you about go under. 
Because you just saw what I did. I helped you to, uh oh, I helped you the last time. And here you are again. And they just sink and sink and sink and sink and sink. And we, well, I'm going to wait till I say, honey, I'll call you back. Jesus rescued him first. Then he rebuked him. Who is this for? What is Jesus saying this morning? Whatever you in, even when you take your eyes off me, when you cry out, I'm going to help you. But after I help you, I'm going to deal with you again. Watch this. Because we got to understand, Isha, watch it. We got to understand that yesterday, he did what he did. They were on the boat. The sea came. The storm came. Jesus calmed the sea. He rescued them first. Then he rebuked them. Here we are again. He going to rescue Peter first. Then he going to rebuke him. He said, you little faith. You got a new name. Look, hey, come here. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Watch this. It says, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and called him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt me? Watch this. Verse 32. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind stopped. Uh-oh. When Jesus got in the boat with them, the wind stopped. I'm going to say it again. When Jesus got in the boat with them, the wind stopped. Watch this. Verse 33. Oh, God. It says, I'm going to go back to 31 because I don't want to skip. Immediately Jesus got out. Jesus got out. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt me? Verse 32. Watch this. Verse 32. And when they climbed into the boat, Jesus got in there with them. The wind died down. Verse 33. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him saying, truly you are the son of God. Didn't y'all just realize that the other day? Y'all, I'm done. I, I was so done with this. And I'm like, but Jesus, you just you just showed them the other day that you, did they just say, Jesus, what manner of man is this the other day? Now here we are again. Oh, truly, you are the son of God. We already established that. Oh, Jesus. Y'all, so, so when we go through stuff, why do we be like, oh, God, God, you did it again. I did it the last time, and 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 the last time. The last time. So why are you shocked that I always come through? I am God. Here we go. It says, Jesus in this whole story is dealing with their fear again. Hmm. This is how important fear is. This, 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 this is what I'm telling y'all. When you let fear take root, it is a serious problem. Fear can come in so many forms. It says, okay, I hear you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to deal with that, that root, that, that, that spirit of fear tomorrow. I, I hear you. I hear you. Somebody text me later and remind me. If any of my issues, all y'all on here, remind me that tomorrow I need to talk about fear, the spirit of fear. Because, because it, it's two days in a row he done bought it up. So that means you must want me to go deeper with it, Daddy. So that's what I got to do. But today we're going to finish this. Listen, listen. He says, it is I do not be afraid. He's dealing with their fear again. Watch this. It is, watch what time it is. In the fourth watch of the night. So this is somewhere between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. This is it. You can find that part in Mark 6, 47 through 52. Jesus came to the disciples who were in the boat in the middle of the sea after they had exhausted themselves. Jesus watched them wear themselves out. Y'all, listen to this. Jesus watched them. Where they set out trying to whirl a boat in a storm. Watch this. I'm going to say it one more time. Jesus watched them trying to wear themselves out, rowing a boat. My question was, why didn't just ask, call on you? I'm going to do it on my own. We got it. It's 12 of us. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. We got it. We got it. Why not just call on Jesus? He, he can help us. He's a miracle worker. Why not just call on him? Jesus watched him do all this. It said, the Bible says, listen, the Bible says, they had exhausted themselves. When you read it in Mark, it, Mark gives you, see Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they are what we call the synoptic gospels, meaning these Matthew, Mark, Luke, John are all telling the same story in their own way. Y'all do Bible scholars, y'all get it. Everybody telling the story the same way in their own way, but some may give more detail than others. Matthew always gives the most details. So, but Mark talks about the detail. Mark didn't even go in the fact of, uh, of him walking on water so much. Matthew went through all that. Mark want to talk about the fact that we were tired. We were out there <laughs> rowing this boat and we were, watch this. 
It said Mark 6, 47 through 52. Jesus came to the disciples when they were in the was in the middle of the sea. And after they exhausted, they were wore out, rowing against the waves and the windy storm. Jesus watched them struggle. Y'all, Jesus watched them struggle. All, all 41 of y'all over here on Facebook and, and all y'all over there on YouTube. Jesus watched them struggle. And I'm sure Jesus is like, I'm going to see how long they going to struggle before they ask for me to come help them. How long you going to go through what you're going through until you go back to God? Who is this for? You're trying to do it on your own. You're trying to do it on your own and you're struggling. And Jesus is saying, I can help you. I can help you. I can help you. Woohoo. Miracle worker over here. Woo, I part red seas. You know, hey, the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf ear, the dead are resurrected. How long you gonna keep struggling? I can help you. They struggling. And Jesus said, let me go on out here and help them again. Again. Let me go help them. Because they trying to do it on their own. Let me go help them. Watch this. It says, so between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., Jesus watched them struggle. And then he came. Watch this. Jesus went to them walking on the water. This is y'all. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for this one? Roz, you ready? Because because this this about to blow your mind. <laughs> God, I love you. This is about to take you out, Roz. I'm gonna tell you. So, real, y'all ready? Y'all ready for this one? Doctor Watkins, you ready? I'm telling y'all, just hold on. Just just hold on. Hold on. So, watch this, Fernet. They're in the boat struggling. They str what are they struggling against, Doctor Three? The waves of the sea. Mm, watch this. They're struggling against the waves of the sea. Here come Jesus walking on. Here come Jesus walking on the waves that you're afraid of. Jesus is walking on what you're afraid of. Jesus is walking on. It's under his feet. Oh God, listen, your storm is under his feet. Your storm is under his feet. He says, I'm walk I came out walking on the waves, letting you know that I'm above what you in. Oh, God, help me today. I'm above what you in. I walk on waves. I talk to the sea. It obeys me. I am God. Oh, God, I love you this morning. Hmm. He said, I'm walking on what you're afraid of. Oh, Jesus, I'm walking on what you're afraid of. I don't know who this is for. I'm over what you're afraid of. I'm walking on what you're afraid of. It's under his feet. Y'all just drop that in the chat. It's under his feet. Whatever your it is, it's under. I told you, Roz. I told you, Dr. Walking, this is going to get you. It's under his feet. Whatever you're walking in, whatever you're going through, whatever you believe in God for, he said, I'm telling you, it's under my feet. <sighs> you're struggling with. Oh, Jesus, watch this. Um, who God? Oh, God. Shira, um, Mills, you just messed me up. Listen, listen. It says, it says, you're struggling with what I'm over. Who God help me. He said, you're struggling with something that I've overcome. You're struggling with something that I've subdued. You're struggling with something that I got control over. You do know I speak to what you're scared of. Who I just showed you. Who God, I love you this morning. I just showed you yesterday. I just showed you the other day that I, I speak to the sea and they listen to me. I'm over marrying whatever you're struggling with. God, I love you this morning. So it says, so it says. Ah, Jesus went to them walking on water. And, 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 and it might be a little fearful when you can't really see it at first. You're like, wait a minute. Is that Jesus? But the minute I realize that it's him, oh God, the minute I realize that it's him, I should be okay. Watch this. It says, oh God, they were troubled and they cried out for fear. This is the second time they fear has got Jesus' attention. What did it say when they was in the boat the other day? We learned about them in the boat and, and, the, and Jesus calmed the sea. It, it says in the text that it was not the storm that woke him up. It was their fear and their unbelief. Hmm. Here we are again. Their fear got his attention. Y'all out there struggling by yourself. Won't even ask me to help you. So let me go help y'all because now y'all scared because here come a storm again. But you just seen me. Okay. Watch this. Second time they cry out for fear. And this is what I love about God. The, the, the God don't get mad at us for being afraid. He going to rebuke us later. Watch this. Now, you're not going to get away from the rebuke. He chastised those that he loved. But why are they talking to me like that? But why did it? And then he chastised those that he loved. Watch this. So it says, second time they cried out in fear. 
and it gets Jesus' attention. But watch this. Remember, watch this, and they know who God, y'all watch this. You do know that they know the Bible. Most of the disciples went to school. So most of the disciples know the word of God. So when you talk about the Psalms of David, he said in Psalm 34, wow. So do you really know the Bible? Watch this. Psalm 34 says this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble hear thereof. And they are glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Listen, let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried. Watch it. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Watch this. The angels of the Lord, my God, and kept around and kept round about them that fear him and he delivers them. Oh, taste and sick. We, we quote it. We quote, most of us that, that, that's in the church, we know Psalm 34. Because y'all know that that's what we call that's an exaltation scripture. You start quoting this, the whole church going to go crazy. And here we close that. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. They knew this, but they doubted him. Uh-oh, uh-oh. They knew this, but they doubted him. Watch this. And then we get down to verse um, 27. And Jesus tell them, don't be afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Jesus didn't come to the disciples to trouble them or make them afraid. He immediately spoke to them to comfort them. I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to help you. Y'all do know you were struggling. You do know that y'all about to drown. But because y'all don't have no faith and y'all got to actually see me. I had to show up like I did. Watch this. So it says there are two good reasons that you need to put away fear. Watch this. Two reasons. Why we have to deal with this fear. Two, I'm going to say it again. Two reasons why we got to deal with this fear. Watch this. The problem is not nearly as bad as you thought it was. That, that's what fear does. It makes you blow stuff up like, oh, no, we about to die. Oh, no, we going another. Oh, no, I'm going to lose the house. Why don't you just call the mortgage company and make a payment arrangement? Why you done went all the way left? This is like what people call me. Girl, I'm going through. I got a bad doctor's report. Really? Did you go see another doctor? What did God tell you? You do know God is it. We go all the way left. Watch this. It says nine times out of 10, when fear steps in, the situation is not as nearly as bad as you think, as you making it to be. Mm. The problem is you are afraid. So you think the worst case scenario, you ever go to the doctor and you diagnose with something or you well, watch this. Oh, no, here's, here's a better one. You ever get ready to have um, a procedure? They're scared to death. You know, these are these are the things that could happen. Watch this. These are the things that could happen. These are the things that, that might happen to you. These are the things that, that, that happen 20% of the time, 10% of the time. And we hear that. And we're like, oh, Lord, I don't want to do it no more. I'm scared. Fear. Doctors will always give you, watch this, the worst case scenario, because we don't, we don't want to give you no false. Doctors don't want to give you no false hope. And they give you the worst thing that could happen, could possibly happen, so you can't sue them. So you can't say, it. it, it, it nobody told me that would happen. So we got to get doctors have to give you the worst case scenario. And this is when fear steps in. Watch this. Fear steps in. Watch this, Brenda Allen Smith, because we think the worst here. We, we think the worst. That's what fear come from. Watch this. Number two, even though the problem may be real, the issue is real. We see it. It's on paper. Yep. Diagnose it. Yep. OK. It's real. There is an even greater solution and help at hand, but we don't look for it. What would what were the disciples doing? Struggling, mowing the boat, rowing the boat. Why not just call on the one that's been helping you all this time? You done seen him do all these miracles. He just spoke to a sea. Why not call him again to speak to this sea? That call, that's where fear come from. Watch this. So verse 28, watch this. Lord, if it's you, hit Peter, if it's you, show me. If it's you, I need a sign. If it's you, come on. I know it's you, God. He needed a sign. If it's you, command me to come to you and walk on the water. Listen, the Bible doesn't tell us why did Peter do that? We don't know. We don't know why out of all 12 of them, here come big mouth Peter. Uh -uh, if that's you, God, let me tell me to come on and walk on water just like you're doing then. Jesus said, bet, come on. Woo, watch this. He said, come on, listen. But watch this. We talk about big mouth Peter, but watch this. But his faith, watch this, Selena. 
his faith was something out of this world. Because if we out on a uh, get go on a cruise and get off that boat and say, Jesus, if it's you, I'm gonna walk on this water. How many of us gonna jump off that boat? Do we have that type of do we have that type of trust in God? Peter stepped out in the middle of the ocean. Oh God, I love you. Peter stepped out in the middle of the ocean. If it's you, I tell me to come on and I'll walk on this water. They already see the waves. They already see the sea going crazy. But Peter's faith, if that's Jesus, he's going to tell me to walk on this water. So I'm going to step out here and we're going to see. So you got faith for that. <laughs> this shows us, watch this, that we use our faith when we want to. Woo. For me, faith ain't optional. Watch this. So Peter, bold Peter, <laughs> steps out. Listen, this is the thing that got me. Now, you got enough faith to walk on water, but the minute a wave came, you got scared again. Huh? Fickle. Fickle. We have faith to believe for certain things. We have faith to believe, and then one minute you believe it, one minute you don't. One minute you, you cold, one minute you're hot. One minute you lukewarm, one minute you this. One minute. Can we just decide to believe God? Can, can, can we just decide to have faith? But whatever, whatever faith. Watch this. So it said, listen, listen, Lucretia, listen, listen, prophetess. It says, my faith is not optional. Watch this. Do you understand that to start sold out ministries as a single woman spending the level of money that we spend every time we have a service, that my faith can't be optional? I, I can't sit there and say, well, I'm going to wait and see if they come and then we go. Do no, no, baby. No, no, no. Because you have to understand that when, whenever we have service, watch this. Whenever we have services, watch this going to bless y'all. I have to pay on Monday for a service on Friday. So that takes faith to believe where the people going to come. And God, if they don't come, you're still like, okay. And God, if they don't come, you're still able. God, if you don't come, we still gonna, they don't come. We still going to meet budget. Do you know that in order to have worship and warfare, do you know the level of thousands that's already spent for a service that's not going to happen to August? So that takes faith. I don't have time to be fickle in my faith. This is why I kept telling y'all, when God is saying right now, it's time for them to walk out on water. They got to do it right now. They don't have time to wait. It's because you got to get in position for what's to come. God, watch this. It says, who God, I got to hurry up. It says, it says, hmm. Thank you for your seat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because it's popping up on here. I need to turn this off. It says, be of good cheer. Who God? It is me. Then it says, Peter walked out on the water to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and he started to sink. But you just had faith to walk on water, Peter. Then a, do y'all, listen, listen, this is going to bless y'all. Watch this. Have you ever noticed you'll take a big, huge, humongous leap of faith, Tracy? Watch this. You'll take a huge leap of faith and you'll step out there. Watch this. And then something little will cause you to take your eyes off God. Have y'all ever noticed that? It don't be nothing. And that's to say, fear is not even as big. It, it's bigger than what we, we make it bigger than what it really is. You'll take a huge leap of faith. Tracy, watch it. You, you'll take all your finances, start the business. And then because the first week I ain't make no money, you want to quit. Woo, distraction. Watch this. You, you'll take a huge leap of faith, go rent the building. First, per, first person say, well, you know what, Dr. Three, I ain't going to make it on that Friday. Ah, God. Here we go. Distractions. Listen, it says, because, okay, I don't know who this is for. Mm, those of you that's in business, those y'all that's in ministry, and God tell you do something crazy, it seems crazy to you, but it's, it, it's, it's big to God. Because you got to understand this. When we talk about Ephesians 3 and 20. Do we really understand how big God is? So he's not telling you to do nothing little. <laughs> God. He's not telling you to do nothing little. So what he's telling you is big, it's crazy, it's never been done, it's strange. That's how I know it's God. Because he's not, God is not telling me to do something that's already being done. Why? How do I know it's God? Because Satan's not going to tell me to do nothing that's going to build a kingdom of God. Satan is not going to tell me to do something that's going to set my, fi my family up. My gener the generations that's coming after me, my legacy is not going to tell me to do something that's going to make them wealthy. We try to take the thing to get me with us, and I say us because I, I've done it. We try to take something so simple and make it so difficult. Well, why? And I don't see it. And this person did it. And God said, but you're not that person. <sighs> but you're not that person. 
You're not them. You're mine. You're not them. You're my chosen. You're not them. You're my remnant. I'm going to do it different to you. I do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Shh. Watch this. So it says. He got out there, out there on the water. He had faith. He walked on that water. He looked at the waves and he started sinking. And it says immediately Jesus grabbed him and he said, little faith, come here. Little faith, why are you doubting me? He changed his name from Peter, the rock, to little faith. Oh, God, help me somebody. So it says, once Jesus rescued Peter, he spoke to Peter about his lack of faith. This little faith led him to doubt and the distraction that made him sink. He said, your lack of faith caused you to doubt me. Your lack of faith is what's causing you to sink. Watch this. Peter sinks under the waves of the sea. Peter sinks under the wind of the sea. But I'm looking at Jesus who is over the wind and the sea. I'm looking at Jesus who has my distraction under his feet, but I cause it to cause me to sink. Hmm. Watch this. It was not the violence of the winds nor the raging of the waves which endangered. Y'all, listen to this. What endangered his life was not the waves. What endangered his life? Let me close that. What endangered his life was not the waves. What endangered his life was not the sea. What endangered his life was his fear. The waves didn't cause you to sink. Uh-oh. Who am I talking to this morning? Whew, I felt that. Watch this. What you're going through ain't what's killing you. What, what, what you're going through ain't, ain't the thing that's going to take you out of here. What's going to take you out of here is that you don't believe God. Who God? Who God? Well, listen, li listen, listen, because I, I, I have to give my testimony. Y'all know my dad, my dad, Curtis Paulin. He left this earth. Listen, he left this earth because he had colon. No, no, no. He had pancreatic cancer. When he was diagnosed, it was stage four. When he was diagnosed, they gave him four to six months to live. I asked my daddy. I said, daddy, do you want to fight? He said, yeah, we're going to fight. I said, well, I got you. Let's let's go. Let's get it. Let's go. I said, me, you and God, we got this. And I told the doctors, I said, don't you ever come in here and tell him his diagnosis. Don't you ever come in here and give him his, his, his a death sentence. I said, what you do is I'm his power of attorney. I'm over everything concerning him. You let me know. And I'll, do, and I'll relate a message to him. But I don't want y'all talking to him. Listen, listen, because I didn't need his faith to waver. Watch this. And so when they gave dad four to six months, y'all know the story. Dad lived for over two years. Watch this. He had pancreatic cancer and it spread to his liver. And he went on to glory. Watch this. And so here we are. Here, me, his daughter. I go to the doctor. Uh oh. Well, Elizabeth, what's going on? Because I've had the same doctor ever since I can remember. Elizabeth, how you doing? What's going on? So I tell her about dad. I said, you know, I lost my dad. And she was like, what? I said, yeah. And she said, wait a minute. What? What? Well, what did your dad die of? Watch this. Um. Well, for, at one point he had colon cancer. They got that situated. But this time it came back. He had pancreatic, and it went to his liver. The whole time I'm talking, she's doing this. So who else in your family had cancer, Elizabeth? Uh-oh, here we go. Well, my grandmother, Elizabeth, she had breast cancer, but it didn't kill her. Um, and, and then my granddaddy, he had cancer. All my grand and my, my granddaddy, he died with cancer. Two of my daddy's brothers, they, they died with cancer. Oh, and my granddaddy's brothers, all of them died with cancer. And she looking like, and I'm just going down the list like, okay, whatever. She says, so what we going to do, Elizabeth? Watch this. It's because you are extremely, y'all Y'all got to hear my testimony, because you are extremely high risk. And we've already removed cancer cells out of you one time. Why? Because every time they try to say I had cancer, y'all, I end up pregnant. But anyway, that's a whole nother story. So they said two times we had to remove cancer cells out of your uterus. I said, okay, well, that's fine. So so we had the hysterectomy. We had all that. Y'all know my testimony. So we get down here. Dad gone. His brother's gone. My granddaddy, all his brother's gone. Listen, Mary and Paul, we family. Some Paul is on his, they, they can testify to this, that it runs in, the, in, in my daddy's side of the family really, really strong. Watch this. So she said, listen, what we're going to have to do? Is I know you're not that age yet, but we were already doing because I've been getting mammograms since I was in my 30s because my grandmother had breast cancer. So what we're going to do is we're we going to start you now. You have to get a colonoscopy every so many years, but we can't do you like we normally do regular people. When they get to 50, we have to start you now and we're going to have to do them real regular because if anything happened, I got to catch it. I said, OK, fine. Yo, I still ain't thinking. No, I'm high risk. Watch this. So what happens is I go for my first colonoscopy right after dad passed. And I ain't thinking nothing of it. I'm just like, okay, they're going to do this test. They're going to put me to sleep. I'm going to get that good, good sleep and we good. They do the colonoscopy. Me, Brittany, and the girls, we out eating pancakes. I'm good. Doctor called me, Elizabeth. I said, yeah, how you doing? Because me and her like that. 
She said, well, you do know they removed like three, four polyps out of your colon. I said, well, what's that? Well, we're going to test them and see if they got cancer. I said, no, they ain't got no cancer. I said, we good. She said, Elizabeth, I say, Dr. K, you know me. I said, you, 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 know, you know who my daddy is. She always laughed because I said, you know who my daddy is. Because that's how we do when we, we I go on my promise. I said, you know how my daddy is. She said, well, they got three polyps on Elizabeth. I'm concerned. I said, well, you can be concerned. I said, but call me when you get the results. Guess what? Negative. I said, okay, so here we go again. Down the road a couple years later, she told me, Elizabeth, time for you to go for your colonoscopy. I said, okay, fine. She said, how you been feeling? I said, I'm good. She said, okay, go in again. Same phone call. Elizabeth, I know you don't want to hear this. I said, what is it, Dr. K? Well, they got some polyps again. I said, okay. She said, they got some more polyps out of you. I said, did they send them to, did they, did they send them to get tested yet? She said, no, I said, well, call me when they test them. She started like, she said, okay, Elizabeth, I'll talk to you later. Call me back. I'm off the cruise. Do, um, Elizabeth, you know what? Ain't nothing there. I said, no. But this time, Elizabeth, they ain't get but one polyp. Uh-oh. I said, see? I said, I talked. I said, Dr. K. I said, you're going to be coming to church with me soon. She just started laughing. I said, negative again. Listen, so you got to understand that whenever you deal with doctors, they're going to give you the worst case scenario every time. But where is your faith? Whoo, because I could have got scared. Watch this. I could have got scared because, oh, my daddy and his and, and his brothers and my uncle and then my grandma had a mastectomy and, and, and then and cancer, cancer. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Ain't never scared. Why, why, why are you never scared? Watch this. Because just like y'all, I got to get over here because off here because I, I am over my time. What is Because just like Jesus told him disciples, we're going to cross over to the other side. Jesus told Elizabeth, oh God, I love you this morning. Watch this. Jesus told Elizabeth, you shall live and not die and you're going to declare the works of the Lord. And because I believe that, Nicolette, watch this. Because I believe that, no matter what doctors tell me, I'm going to be good. You may, you may have to give me some medicine. We may have to do certain things. But I'm going to be good. I ain't going nowhere until my work in this earth is completed. I don't know who that's for because you scared. And God said, why are you scared? I, 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 I got your issues under my feet. Why are you scared when I'm the God that walks on water? Why are you scared when even though the, I speak to your situation? He spoke to the waves and they obey. He said, so why are you scared? Hmm. Who? Where, where does your faith lie? Does it lie in God or does it lie in what the doctor's saying? Who, I'm trying to help y'all. Listen, so it says, we, we, we about 50 strong this morning. God bless all y'all. So it says, watch this. Peter shows us, I'm going to give y'all this and I promise I'm getting off here. Peter here shows us what weak faith will do. Little faith is found in places where we might expect great faith. I keep telling y'all, we'll believe God for the big thing. And something little happened, and all of a sudden, we don't believe him no more. Huh? You mean to tell me you believe God to invest $40,000 in starting it, and now because didn't nobody come to your first event, you don't believe God no more? Huh? Could it be that God trying to test your faith? Okay, I'm going to stay right here. Little faith, far, look, little faith will ask for a sign. God, show me if it's you. God, show me if it's you. God, if it's you, do this. God, if it's you, do that. But I just believe God. I don't need no sign. Why? Why you? Why, oh, Jesus, watch this. Why do you not need a sign, Doctor? Because he did this. 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 I don't need no sign. I know that he's God. Watch this. It says, "Little faith, when little faith is apt to have too high of an opinion of its own power." When I don't have faith, that is because I'm relying on Elizabeth. I can do it. I can, watch this. What were they doing in the boat? Struggling, rowing the boat. When all you had to do, we, we got this. We got this. Come on, y'all. We got this. We got this. Why not just call on Jesus? Why not just believe that Jesus is going to help you like he always do? It says, little faith is too much affected by its surroundings. We watching all this. We watching whoever's around us. We watching the team. We watching what they ain't doing. We watching what they are doing. We watching everything. And that I mean we took our eyes off God. Watch this. Little faith will exaggerate your problem. Who oh God. Little faith, watch this, will exaggerate whatever you in. It's going to blow it up to make it seem like, oh, Lord, oh, God, it's so bad. Oh, Lord, we, we ain't going to make it. It does all that. That's what little faith do. It makes a little thing seem so it can't be done. That's what little faith do. Watch this. Watch this. What does, what, do, what are, it says, Peter also shows us some of the strengths of having little faith. Little faith is true faith. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed. You don't need a whole lot. You just need a little bit. Whoo, 
Jesus, watch this. <clears throat> little faith will cause you to obey God's word. Little faith made Peter say, tell me to walk on this water. And I know it's you. I'm going to step out here on the water because I believe that you, you ain't going to let me sink. Watch this. Little faith can accomplish great things when they when it needs to. Watch this. Little faith will pray. Little faith will cause you to pray in a storm. Uh oh, little faith will cause you to. Little faith will cause you to take your eyes off of the situation and go straight to God. Watch this. Little faith is safe. Why? Because you know, I believe that God is near. I believe that He'll never leave nor forsake me. Little faith. Watch this. Why? And then this is, I'm gonna close with this. I'm gonna close because I'm way over my time. I'm gonna close with this. Why did you doubt me? Jesus asked Peter. If you believe me to, to, to allow you to walk on water, why did you start doubting me after I got you out here? Uh-oh. Who is this for? If you believe me to start the business, if you believe that I called you to ministry, if you believe that I told you to do this or do that, why once you got out here doing what I said, why did you start doubting me? Woo. Watch this. Jesus only asked this question once. He rescued Peter. After I saved you out of your mess, now I need to know, why did you doubt me? Watch this. At that point, it was entirely reasonable question for him to ask. Why did you doubt? Listen, we can say that in theory, there might be reasons for doubting Jesus and his promises. Basically, Jesus asking Peter, have I ever given you a reason to doubt me? Y'all, Jesus, what Jesus is really saying, Peter, wait a minute. Why are you doubting me? Have I ever given you a reason to doubt me? Uh-oh, here we go. Has Jesus ever, has Jesus ever given us a reason to doubt him? Does he not come through right on time? Not when we want it, but on time. Because you do know that God controls time. Time don't control God. Listen, it says, basically Jesus asking Peter, have you ever found me to be unfaithful? Have you ever found me, Peter, to not do what I said? Mm, watch this. Peter, have you ever found me to not be trusted? Whew. You've been with me all this time. Have I ever let y'all down? Have y'all ever, have I ever let y'all go under? Watch this. He says, have I ever given you a reason to not trust me? Mm, watch this. Is your problem, it says, it says, our doubts are unreasonable. It don't even make sense for us to doubt. Whew. Watch this. It does not make sense for us to doubt. Wherefore did you, why did you doubt? If there be a reason for little faith, there is evidently reason for great confidence. Mm. It's a reason God gives us more reason to trust him. He never gave us a reason not to. Who is this for this morning? He said, I never gave y'all a reason not to trust me. Will you trust me this morning? Will, will, will you rely on me? Will you walk out on the water this morning? Will you walk out on the water and trust me to be the God? Who God? That, 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 that you say I am. Will you trust me to be the God that you say I am? The, the God that you testify of. The God that you lift up your hands and worship. Will you trust me to be that God? This morning, he's calling us to walk out on the water. To trust him when we can't see him in the boat. To trust him when we think he's silent. He says, it's time now, y'all. I told y'all the last six months, God is calling us to the carpet. He's, I, I, and if y'all wasn't on here in the beginning, when I opened up with the prophetic word the Lord gave me, something is coming in 2025, and these last six months is our setup. Trust God. Watch this, because what God is saying, and, and, and I, told, I shared in the beginning of this, what God started telling us, he says, I, I had a prophetic dream, I was asleep, I was minding my own business, and I, and I went into a prophetic dream, and uh, open eye vision, and I could hear the voice of God screaming from heaven, you have robbed me. Watch this. You have robbed me. This is going to bless y'all. You have robbed me is what I heard God saying. And I said, God, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? He said, because in 2025, watch this. In 2025, something is going to hit the financial systems of this world. And you're going to need me financially. But I'm going to remind you that them last six months, you robbed me. I am not. Okay, I'm about to get off here because y'all, who y'all put on the pathetic? Because he says, you got to trust me with your finances like you want to trust me with everything else. Where your, where, where your heart, where your treasures are, that's where your heart is. He says, he says, you, you, you trust me with everything else, but when I say so, you don't. When I say tithe, you don't. Because you trust all this other stuff. He said, but you're going to need me financially. 
y'all, and I'm not saying because I'm a tither, I'm a seed sower. My whole house, I told y'all, if, you, if you're gonna live here, you must tithe. That's not a negotiable. Watch this. So, so, so I'm not saying this because I, I want y'all to sow into sold out international. No, baby, you sow wherever you're being blessed. I'm trying to help you to not be destroyed by what's coming. I'm trying to help you to help yourself. God is saying something is coming and that's going to hit this financial um, that, that something coming financially in 2025 that's going to take some people out. They're going to blow their they're going to blow their brains out because financially they couldn't do it and it stressed them and they got scared and they this is what they, what they did. I am telling you this next six months, baby, if you wasn't a consistent child, you better become one now. If you want to see so you better become one now. Why? Because what is coming, God is saying, it's going to hit the financial system and you're going to ask me for help and I'm going to remind you that the last six months when I sent that girl hollering on there to tell y'all what to do, you didn't do it and now you're asking me for help? No. I'm telling you, I'm, I, I got to get off here. I got to get off here. Listen, listen. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I promise y'all I do. I do. I do. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Listen, I want you to join me. It's scrolling on the bottom of the screen. I want you to join me this Friday night for a sold out live encounter. But y'all, worship and warfare. Jesus is coming. August 9th. It's about to be. If you ever been there, I, I keep telling y'all, if you, you, you actually, you can go to my YouTube page. You can look, you may have to scroll and hunt it. But last year's Worship and Warfare is on there. But you may have to, you know, you may have to scroll and look for it. If you've never been to Worship and Warfare, when I tell you the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, <laughs> financial breakthroughs, listen, that's Worship and Warfare. We got the psalmist. We got the, the shofar blower. We got the power for an anointed prophetic intercessors. We, we, we got... um. The band, listen, all the dancers, we everybody coming together to create the sound of heaven. Uh oh, to create the sound of heaven in the earth. August 9th, listen, be there also. August 9th, August 9th, August 9th, August 9th. I am doing our team is doing sold out international is doing our first back to school drive. I'm making sure that all the babies that's connected to me. Oh, you're going to win this year. This is about to be your best year. Last year, we gave out anointing oil to all the students. I'm going to anoint them. I'm going to give them their own personal bottle of oil so they can anoint themselves. I'm going to give the kids oil. And this year, I'm giving them their they school supplies. And it's one more special thing we're going to do this year, but y'all got to be there to see it. Listen, sold out international. We, we, we're on the kingdom assignment. So if you want to help with the school supplies, it is on my page. You can, um, you can sow a seed. But if you sow a seed and you want to help with... Um, um, school supplies, please watch this. Please tag it. This is, if, if you sow a seed, this for the school supplies and to sold out, tag it so I know that that is for the school supplies. Listen, so you can help by um, Zelle Cash app. You can go, we got a link posted. You can actually go to that link and you can pick and choose what you want to give. Or watch this, or you can bring it, whatever supplies you want, you can bring it Friday night. Because we got to set this up for, for, the, for the kids. You can bring it this Friday night um, to service, this Friday night. So listen, if you want to sow into this word, the information is on the bottom of the screen. I don't have to tell y'all about seeding. I don't have to tell y'all about tithing. The Lord has spoken. If you're not a tither, this is absolute fertile soil. Y'all, I, I say all the time, you can't judge me, but baby, you can judge my fruit. You can judge the fruit of this ministry. What's, what's, what's happening over there? judge it listen so if you want to sell the information is on the bottom of the screen i want you to tag that word i want you to tag that seed god answers thank you tracy listen she on her job this morning thank you thank you thank you i'll put it on the screen so they can see it there you go that is the link for the school supplies thank you tracy listen donate yeah so if you want to donate that's the link where you can go pick and choose what you want or if you don't want to do it that way, you can drop it off Friday night. If you don't want to do it that way, you can just cash app it or zell it with the information on the bottom of the screen and tag it. But listen, I love y'all. Tracy, somebody text me now. Remind me what I'm teaching tomorrow because I said I was going to teach about uh, fear, 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 fear. Ugh. Because God is telling us to launch out in the deep, to not be afraid of them storms. So somebody remind me that so I can make sure I study that when I get through walking these three miles this morning. Listen, I love y'all. Y'all got, we got this. Can I encourage y'all this morning? We got this. We got this. We're going to be all right. Sister Regina, we're going to be all right. We got this. 
No matter what happened in this earth, we got this. Why? Because we know who our daddy is. Oh, Tracy, you already, um, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> she said, I already text you. Okay, listen, so so, so we, we we got this. I want y'all to just go ahead and drop that in the chat, and I promise you, I'm going to get out there. Tiara, you tell me to enjoy my workout? Girl, never mind. <laughs> okay, I'm going to walk and be happy for you today. <laughs> listen, um, drop that in the chat. Um, in, in, in here that we got this drop that in the chat we got this we got this we're gonna be all right because we God's chosen we his remnant listen he got us he's our daddy God he's a good good father listen I love you I want you to have a good day on purpose hey Teresa I hope I see you this year um worship and warfare good morning uh Dana Powell Largan God bless y'all I want to see all y'all at worship and warfare get you a hotel room holiday Inn is cheap holiday Inn university is, is normally re I won't say cheap they reasonable <laughs> Get here, get here, get here, Charlotte, North Carolina, August 9th. Get here this Friday, July 12th, same location. I love y'all. God bless you. And I want you guys to have a good day on purpose.